Mega seed. Have you guys seen Rick and Morty episode one, season one? When you had to smuggle. Yeah. Do you have Netflix? You used to. So you're like me. We need someone's password. We have to get. Oh. Okay. That's nice. Say my name. Now they know who I am. Well, what an enterprising spirit. Hmm? What an entrepreneur. And who you might ask. Were those entrepreneurs back here in Britain who could be trusted with the commercialization of what was to become the nation's favorite addiction? The Quakers, of course, uh, or to go by their proper name, the Religious Society of Friends, a spiritual group who would gather together in meetings uh, not dissimilar to this and discuss matters spiritual and temporal. And when one was moved by the spirit, one would George. stand and speak freely. All right, George, thank you. Thank you, George. <laughs> Imagine, though, dear audience, business getting into bed with religion. They even had their own code of conduct for commerce. The uh, Christian and brotherly advices regarding trade. That's it. Oh, those were the days when business... Christian and brotherly advices regarding trading, according to the Religious Society of Friends. One, it is advised that none launch forth into trading and worldly business, aside from what they can manage honorably and with reputation, so that they may keep their word. Let their yea be their yea, and their nay be their nay. Whatever is otherwise cometh of the evil one. <clears throat> Two, it is advised that all friends should be careful not to contract extravagant debts to the endangering and wrongdoing of others or to their families, nor to break contracts, promises or agreements in the buying and selling, occasioning strife and contention, reproach to truth. For the love of money is a snare. Yes, the love of money is a snare. If all you want is profit, then you might not care, but the love of money is a snare. Three. All 
friends are advised of a most pernicious practice that could lead to utter ruin. And that's the use of paper credit. Such practices are highly unbecoming and absolutely inconsistent with the truth. You see, the love of money is a snare. The love of money is a snare. If all you want is cash, then you might not care. But the love of money is a snare for...
machines Sweet steel dreams They roast them and break them Throw the shells away Buy them and press Make butter that way Squish and block Squish wash tools round the, round the block Travel to Hereford with sugar and milk Blended tendon Texture like silk Then onto the fraction at born built Shaped and draped with cool feeling chill In a truck To a store Then a shelf on a till The first little hand so small Just wants to go to school and play for you What's the most because of our dreams Then milk is what we want to do And that last little hand so small For a post-match treat Dairy milk is what they want to eat But the first But the first little hand So small Still wants to go to school And play football But the parts must be cut And they are not worth enough To a legal work At someone good enough So we meet Madam Koku, I am inspired. I'd like to suggest a new act. What? I'd like to suggest a new act. It has some comedy, drama, and even audience participation. Well, it's not on the set list today. Oh, Madam Koku, please, come on. Please, please, please. Will it be fun? Oh, you will do very well out of it. In that case, yes, let's improvise. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Yes. First of all, hmm? let me do this. Oh. because it's first. Uh, okay, Madam Coco, you are going to play the corporation, the chocolate component. Mm -hmm. If you can stand here, the corporation. And um, Captain Cadbury, please join me. I want you to be the Ghanaian government official. Ooh. You stand right here. And from the audience, um, Adam, our director, please clap for Adam, our director. He's going to play the Ghanaian cocoa farmer. He looks like a typical Ghanaian cocoa farmer. Please, yes, come on, sit. Uh -huh. Our Ghanaian farmer, uh, Kobina the farmer, please stand here. Please face the uh hand. -huh. Okay. And now, you, please, I'll borrow this from you. Uh -huh. And please hold this heavy drum. Please do not drop it on the floor. It's a very expensive drum. Uh -huh. Please, government official, if you can hold this for me. And Madame Coco, if you can hold this for me. This is the amount of work that you do. This is your work burden. This is the work that they do. So compare the work. Now I'm going to give them their reward, which is the amount of money they make from the work that they do. And that is from the consumer, the money from the consumers. All of you out there is coming to the corporation. Um, you can't hold it in your hand. It's a lot. You can't see. Uh-huh. Good idea. Uh-huh. All for you, corporation. All for you. Yes. 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 You see, she has even put her work down. Her small work. Now, uh, what's going to happen is that the corporation is going to buy some cocoa beans from the Ghanaian government official. So let's see that take place. Uh, can I hear? Uh, right. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the farmer is not, uh, the Ghanaian government official is not satisfied. He says he wants more to pay the farmer. He's looking out for the farmer. Mm -hmm. um, can I have some more, please? It's not for me, it's for the farmer. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now, look at what the Ghanaian government official does. They will keep most of it for themselves and ah. just give a small amount to the farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see what's happening? Look at the amount he's giving to the farmer for doing that heavy work. 
all the hard work. But even then, wait, wait. Even from that piece, the Ghanaian government official is still going to take a cut. Another cut. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. That's what's going on. <laughs> so that is what the farmer is making, the cocoa farmer, for that heavy work. And this is the reality on the ground. Thank you so much for playing the game, Coco. Thank you. That was fun. Right? right. So, fine. I'm happy for you. Please. Um, oh. Thank you, Captain Cadbury. And thank you, Ghanaian Coco Farmer. Clap for yourself. You have done a very heavy work. Thank you, Tete. Very diverting. Mm. After all that fun, let's just take a moment. To look around. Bonville. What a glorious garden village it is. A Quaker dream. And those first British chocolate makers, Cadbury, Fry, Roundtree, all Quakers. And then came the sweet toothed Americans, Hershey, Mars, and the French, the Swiss, the Belgians. And then Competition, the mergers, the takeovers. Anyone remember the 1969 Cadbury's merger with Schweppes? Anyone? Anyone remember that? Yes? Yes? What a toxin! Work faster, Asa! Get those shares round! Come on! Jump, jump! Yes. beneficial relationship like an infinite curly wormy shall we Ghana darling did you know that Great Britain was the first industrialized nation oh well done Great Britain nothing to do with the fact that you got all your wealth from your vast empire you say something yes Hey, Britain, I have cocoa beans. Oh, well done, Ghana. I'd like some of those cocoa beans to make into some profitable chocolate in my shiny industrial revolution factories. Oh, sounds nice. Maybe we could have some of these factories in Ghana as well. Oh, no. We don't share our nice new inventions with anyone else. What? Not even with countries that we plundered for their assets? Oh, definitely not even countries that we helped to gain more economic power. Well, what if we invented our own chocolate making machines? We are not stupid, you know. I don't think you've got the ready cash. And anyway, we've just invented a new tax for anyone else who wants to sell us chocolate. Eh. How much is that, Ben? Quite a lot. Our friends, our fellow industrialized nations in the global north will be able to afford it, honey. It'll be worth it in the end. Just think of the eventual profits. But will you be able to afford it? I don't think so. They'll give you something for the cocoa beans, though. Oh, that sounds like an uneven playing field. What if we sold you the beans and also had a share in your profits? That seems more fair, or? That makes no business sense to us. But there's lots of demand, so lots of opportunity for lots of people in your country. Looks like I'm backed into a corner. No, 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 that's not the point. This is where you thank for everything I've done. Oh, sorry, no. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. Thank you for keeping my nation in debt. Thank you for erasing my cultures. Thank you for making us hate ourselves. And thank you for making me speak this balfangulous language. What is your problem? You're not part of our glorious commonwealth. Commonwealth. Oh. 
So had we been able to do the full show, the next scene should have been not only a clash of wits, but ideologies, but done as a rap battle. When Tete asks, what do we mean by commonwealth? And is wealth really common? George finds rhymes to say he isn't just a bust, a blue plaque, but still relevant values. And Coco reveals her true colors, declares that greed is good. That's how the world works, that we are all part of the system and that wealth being common or sharing is something she just doesn't care about. Coco is booed. <laughs> and Connie, remember her? That's Amy who couldn't be here. Connie. Uh, is asked to leave with Coco. But Connie, once only interested in chocolate, has realized that things can change. We don't have to follow the same old song, be caught up in the same systems, but there is a fairer way. I feel like I'm on my own, struggling to know just what to do. While companies like Mongolese have got us farmers on their knees I want to make a change Look me be the surface Put my money where pocket trade is fair And let the big dogs know we care And let the bells of Bourneville ring out With George's spirit beside us We'll sing out For a sweet pocket pound Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe.
Thank you, eh? Take care, okay? Say hi to your stuff, okay? okay? Did you guys see you guys what wow, I just bounce, yeah. did? Hmm. He's got no shoes on. Hmm.